So I'm going to talk about email marketing and a bit of an update what's going on in the marketplace and what we're seeing and a different view on measuring email um, and that's basically the core of it and I'll make that as brief as possible. So the first part we'll be talking about uh, what people do around email segmentation these days. The second part is how email is being used by consumers and what effect that has on the uh, ROI measurement and then I wrap it up. So, segmentation as such. Um, a few years back, clients wouldn't necessarily segment their emails hugely. Um, that has changed. Um, and it has changed recently, even between 2012 and 2013. Um, so the email revenue generated more, comes more and more from targeted, specific, segmented emails and not just a blanket newsletter that is going on out to, a, to an audience. And that is quite interesting to, to know that this is obviously creating revenue and this is, this is happening in the marketplace. Um, and I don't know how that relates, how that benchmarks to what you're doing, but uh, not blanketing uh, the customer base with emails is definitely something that is happening and that it is successful. To the extent that actually most people now segment their email audience into more than six different segments. And that's quite a lot and has also increased in previous years, but it shows that the targeting is important and that it's not longer sufficient um, to just send emails to a whole database to make it relevant, to make the messaging relevant um, and to target the right people, as well as you always have done it with the catalogs uh, to target the right people at the right time, it applies to email as well. So how, can, how does this relate to the Abacus world? As just mentioned uh, by Debbie and all the previous speakers, uh, the Abacus Alliance has so much more data in it uh, that can be used for this kind of exercise. Um, so what you know about your customer is limited compared to uh, what we know in terms of buying behavior across the Abacus Alliance. So in terms of segmentation, uh, that can be used um, to create a very simple for sell segmentation, looking at the share of wallet that a particular brand has in the marketplace and the total spend in that category. So just to give two examples, if uh, you have a very low share of wallet as, as a brand um, in your category, um, but that customer that is on your file spends a lot in that category elsewhere, then obviously you want to grow your share of wallet and that will be the blue cell on this slide um, where you have an opportunity to grow the spend that is happening and that that customer is already spending elsewhere um, with other businesses. On the flip side, if you have a very loyal customer and you have a high share of wallet and that customer spends a lot with you but not a lot with com within the competitive category, then you have an opportunity to really nurture that customer and grow the spend and prevent that customer from going elsewhere in the future and stay with you. And in terms of the messaging and the email segmentation or even any segmentation, what that means is you can adjust your message accordingly. Someone who is highly loyal should get a different message than someone who needs to be targeted aggressively to grow the share of wallet. Simple example would be someone, uh, a customer you want to grow the share of wallet with, you need to give an offer, you need to give a discount, you need to be aggressive. Where someone who spends already loads with you and not with anyone else, don't give them a discount because they're throwing money, throwing money away. Moving on to the state of email, email is going mobile. Um, you all have smartphones in your pocket and um, everyone does it on the tube and everywhere else even though there's no reception there. Um, email is being consumed on mobile phones. Actually it's the most popular activity. Those smartphones can do a lot of things. Uh, what people do with it, they do email. 78% on this slide. Um, and it moves on to how many emails are being opened on mobile devices and how that changes the whole dynamic. 65% um, of emails are being opened on smartphones or tablets versus 35% on the actual desktops and that has changed massively uh, after the introduction of these mobile devices and it has marketing implications. The click to open rate also changes looking at desktop usage versus mobile usage. So 
the click rate is actually lower on the mobile devices, even though more emails are being opened on mobile devices. And that in itself is interesting because obviously you're not getting the clicks on the mobile devices, but you're still getting the engagement in a way. So here for the retail sector, 20% uh, uh, click-through on the desktops versus the half of that on the mobile phones. The implication is that if that was your email campaign here, let's say, and this is actually a real campaign from client, um, they sent out a few emails, had a nice open rate, had a good click-through rate as such. Yeah, numbers are not too high, but um, also the revenue wasn't there. There was almost no revenue being accounted for, but when they did their revenue analysis in the same period, the web shop actually had a quite nice revenue uplift of 2,800 pounds, or 2000, almost 2,900 pounds in that instance. Client can't explain why. Uh, the email metrics don't show it, the email service provider doesn't report it, still the revenue went up. Why? If you look at it differently, um, with the mobile usage in mind, what happened, or what might have happened, is that the emails were consumed on the road, in a bus, somewhere on the mobile device, on the smartphone. Few opens, few clicks, no conversions. Uh, as the email service provider also has reported, there were only a few conversions. However, later on, at a later point in time, actually that transaction happened. And it happened on the PC, it happened back at work, it happened at the computer, uh, at home. Um, and it did not happen necessarily through the mobile phone. Even though there's a lot of transactions or, uh, these days already happening on the mobile phones, there's still a tendency to complete the purchase on the desktop especially when you look at it from the email campaign, and the email campaign doesn't create the conversion as such as the desktop does. So in terms of me measuring response, if we know that, that mobile doesn't really create those clicks and conversions, but it still cre creates a lot of engagement, what does that mean? This is the classic funnel. You have your open rates, you have your clicks to opens, you have your conversion rates, and you have unsubscribes and opt-outs. Uh, the little table shows the average statistics for the UK, and you can benchmark the, uh, that against what you see, but there are de more detailed figures out there. Um, interestingly enough is that revenue generation, the conversion that you all are after, is actually not uh, always priority, and on par or higher is being rated by marketers, the brand awareness aspect, and the engagement as such. Um, and a few years back that wouldn't have been mentioned in the context of email, but the study definitely shows here that brand awareness and engagement is as or equally important than revenue generation as such. If you talk about email acquisition, which some of our clients do, it's, there's always a lot of talk about the conversion as such, but there are different elements to the email benefits, and creating brand awareness is one of them, but what tends to be forgotten sometimes is that a prospecting email campaign can be used to drive people to sign up to your own email newsletter. And then you can do with that email address whatever you want to because it's, it's your own email program. Um, and that is almost uh, sometimes forgotten in the context of email acquisition to drive people instead of the conversion, drive them to the newsletter sign up and then do the conversion later once they're there. So going back to the email conversion funnel, knowing that there is certain activity happening uh, outside the traditional conversion funnel, uh, we have found that uh, actually only 20% of the overall actions that happen uh, subsequently to an email campaign um, represent the, the conversions as such. And there's a lot more happening around the conversion. So if you look at it this way, you have the total universe of, of email recipients and you have consumers who opened or clicked and you have certain consumers who made a purchase. And the opening clicks do not quite <coughs> accurately portray the success of the campaign if you don't take into account uh, other dimensions than the pure purchase conversion. And that in turn leads to a new set of criteria that you could apply to your email campaigns. So instead of purely looking at open clicks, revenue bounces and unsubscribes, why not introduce a few other measurements? Add it to social media, add it to the address book, newsletter sign up I mentioned. There could be other activities, uh, joining a competition, um, whatever it is you want to achieve in, in your environment. Uh, the idea here is to not limit yourself 
to the conversion, the open, the click, and all of, all of that, and just think, okay, what else could be there to measure the success of the email campaign? How do you do it in the end? Because obviously you get your statistics from an email service provider or from, from some, from some other, other supplier about your open clicks and conversions. So you need to go one step further if you want to uh, capture the so-called halo effect of your email campaign. And that works by matching back to source. So you collect all the activity in a certain time period, and it can be up to three months of, of, of activity. That includes additional columns, basically, additional, additional flags uh, of activity your customers have been doing and that you have been able to record. And you match that back to everyone who has received that marketing activity. And it's not just the conversion, it includes some other aspects as well, just to give you a more round picture of what happened uh, with an email campaign. Um, so that is really in the, the core idea to just get everyone thinking, okay, could there be more that we need to look at than just the pure conversion funnel? And that is the idea I wanted to get out there today. There's another aspect to it which we touched earlier today. Um, obviously, multi-channel integration. Um, direct mail was mentioned as a very important uh, channel to coexist with email, and it has grown in that respect. Also think how catalog and email works together um, and um, have there been catalog requesters being produced, uh, for instance, through the email campaign, and are you capturing that at the moment or is that a completely gray area? Um, so quickly to summarize before we all break for lunch, um, email is important in the marketing mix. Everyone in the room is using it. Uh, attribution remains challenging if you have certain activity that's been created. You don't know was it the catalog, was it the email, was it something else. Um, that concept of halo ROI is one approach to maybe capture a few more variables to help you understand your email campaign better and what it does in addition to revenue generation and conversion. Uh, how you do it, you match back. Um, and if you want to talk about that further from a technical viewpoint, we can help you with that. But basically, really evaluating what, the, what that whole email universe has been doing. And don't underestimate the, as, uh, the effects of multi-channels or where the catalog works together with the email well. And that's really what I wanted to talk about before we all break for lunch. Um, and if there are any questions, please give us a shout. Um, as I said before, we're going to move everything along 15 minutes, so we come back here at 2 o'clock but happy to answer any questions now if there are any. Okay, time for lunch.